Well, greetings everybody. Welcome to our King's Channel. For some of you, this may be the ending of the second day of the Feast of Tabernacles. For me here in upstate New York, this is still the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. So upstate New York, the first day and Sabbath officially ends here on the 21st at sundown. That's when the Sabbath ends. And also it's a time to do one of our best like subjects. Praise Father Yahweh through Yahshua, our righteous King. We do blow the trumpets on the new moon and at the full moons of our Father's feast. He invited us to be here. He can see us right now through his righteous Son. And I'm bringing forth this video because we're supposed to have a holy convocation on the first day of the feast. But I'll try to bring out a little bit here and there every day during the feast so that you don't have to go through the feast all by yourself if that's actually how your living conditions are some of us you know we're all alone even though we have a family that's running around us and they know you know of course that it is a sabbath but it's hard to contain you know a family that doesn't believe that they should be obeying when you know one of them out of all and scripture's pretty plain. It does say that it would be, in these days, one from a city, two from a family, you know. And I'll tell you, I'm hoping that I do know my niece. I'm hoping and praying she's going to come to the understanding of the full knowledge of the truth. Because it would certainly help out the others in my flesh and blood family. As she's in contact with them, uh, they say they've been awoken. And I'm sure some other families have the same, you know, where certain individuals out of the populace of one's family kind of get together and start speaking things about world events and the catastrophes uh, as described in the scriptures as much as they understand. And I'm sure if they came here to our King's Channel, they'd just be blown away. But I've been the black sheep of the family a long time. And please don't think I'm showing any prejudicial things at all because I am a Negro. I already brought a video out on that. I am a Negro after the bloodline of our great, 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 and so on grandfather, Negro Noah, and his Negro wife, their three Negro sons, and the Negro wives of their sons, and I'm of that bloodline, okay? I might not look it, but I brought a video on this, so uh, please look it up if you're interested. Personally, colors don't mean anything to me. It's those who believe the truth, and even the heathen can believe and become brothers and sisters. They can become sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father who can see us during His feast through Yahshua, or Yeshua, or Yehoshua, or whoever it is that you are learning to honor as you honored the Father. And our Father can actually see us during his feast because we should be at the cleanest moments of our lives, you know. We shouldn't have the things going on out there in the world while we keep the feast. These are a time to rejoice before our Heavenly Father. I've seen people, you know, work a job during the feast they they miss the whole thing and it's a time of year you know that if you've got children or friends there's nothing wrong with giving gifts to each other during these feast days and especially shower the children with gifts you know the world's got christmas you know but the feast were always a time of giving people would save 10 percent of their tithe or whatever and they would come to the feast with so much that, you know, even the poorest people would be enjoying it because everybody shared. It was a wonderful time. And then they come up with a Christmas, you know, one day a year. You get gifts. Well, you can get gifts eight days out of the year just for the Feast of Tabernacles. And, of course, you also got the Feast of Trumpets. And you got the Feast of Unleavened Bread as well. It's a joyous time for us, or at least it should be. So anyway, to those that are about to go into the third day 
wherein I'll be going into the second day here at sunset tonight. It's 3.19 p.m. right now, and sunset is at 7.04, so I don't know if this will get out before sunset or after. I don't know which day you're in, but you can watch these at any time, you know. There's going to be a holy convocation going on in each one of the videos, because we will discuss some scripture. And did you notice the earthquakes today? Pretty exciting here. Things are livening up. A tad. This is from uh, Quakes Live Earthquake Live Earthquakes Map from GlobalIncidentMap.com. And scroll all the way to the bottom down here. It shows only seven hours time that these quakes have been coming in. Yesterday, I believe there were 303 earthquakes, with a 6.1 magnitude earthquake being the highest yesterday. And here you can see from seven hours ago, we've got them hitting California and Alaska and Oklahoma, Hawaii, Dominican Republic. Well, of course, Alaska gets a lot, but here you got Chile. And this took place within, I believe, the last hour here at a 6.4 magnitude, 17.4 kilometers down. Then you got, uh, you know, 4.7s and... All sorts of different ones, 4.6, 4.3, 4.2, and a 4.3, a 5.0 in the Philippines, <laughs> you know, 4.7 in India. Got a whole lot of shaking going on. Well, what I did want to discuss today was a little bit out of Deuteronomy here, chapter 28. And we touched on Deuteronomy 28 before, but... Here in Deuteronomy 28 19, it says, Curse shall you be when you come in, and curse shall you be when you go out. And of course, these curses, if you read Deuteronomy 28, and I do highly recommend that you read the whole chapter, because though Moshe was speaking this to the children in those days, this was more or less for us in these last days, because these things are going to take place some of them you see taking place already. And at the first beginning of Deuteronomy 28, dividing up the 18 verses so far there, are how you'll be blessed if you keep the commandments. Then it gets on to how you're going to be cursed if you don't keep the commandments. Where verse 19 came in, cursed shall you be when you come in, and cursed shall you be when you go out. Now, verse 20 here, just think about things. If you've been listening to the news at all and hearing what's taking place out there on the earth today, I would have to joyously disagree and say, no, I think some of these things are actually taking place right now as I'm reading this, and they're getting worse. Judge this for yourself. Of course, these are prophecies, and I'm not claiming to know things 100% about prophecies. As far as what it takes for salvation, absolutely. Keep the give or take 613 laws that apply to you, and thus you'll be keeping the Ten Commandments, which means you'll believe the prophets. It don't mean that you have to understand everything they said or why they said it, or even what they were talking about, but believe the prophets. They said, if you quit sinning, you'll have salvation. And they also talked about things to come. Our Messiah said in Matthew 5, 17 through oh, 21, 22, or the end of the chapter, he said, think not. He said, don't even think <laughs> that I came to abolish or do away with the law. Now, what does the Christian Canaanites do out there? They say, oh, he came and did away with the law. That's what he didn't say right there. Can't you see it? <laughs> you know, once saved, always saved, and everything else. It's like, if, if people were once saved, always saved, remember our Messiah was talking about the seeds? Some received it with joy. They jumped right in. They got saved. And then what took place with them? Out of four seeds, only one found fertile ground. One of them was taken away real quick, and the others kind of had a little, you know, suffering and lingering death before they went back into eating the vomit that they had said they were going to leave. But only three out of four fall away. One is saved, and it don't mean they're always saved. 
We got to be saved every day by not breaking a law or commandment, causing our brothers no harm. Deuteronomy 28.20 the Father will send on you cursing. Now this, of course, is given over to our King. Our King is the one bringing forth all of these things. And our Father is sending it as if himself, but now through his mediator, our King of Kings and ruler of rulers is bringing this. He's using Satan's forces. He's using the holy Malachim. And last night, you know, it was kind of interesting because I had my patio door open, as I normally do, and I heard a scurrying as my shadow went across the curtain. And I opened the door and I looked out and there was this cat sitting out there, you know. And I'm not particularly fond of cats. I really don't want to have their parasite, the uh, toxicomia or something like that. It's a parasite. Cats give rats and mice their parasite and the mouse or rat will actually go right up to a cat hoping to be eaten so that the parasites in it will survive in the cat and the cat gives it to humans or whatever and that's why you got people that love cats so much well you can see I don't have that parasite because I'm not particularly fond of cats I used to love them when I was a child, but they die, you know, and it breaks my heart, but I'm not allowed to have any pet anyway while I live in these apartments, so I looked at the cat, and it just struck me, you know, I says, hey cat, I said, are you hungry, and it just looked at me, I said, well, I said, you know, this is the first day of our Heavenly Father Yahweh's Feast of Tabernacles, don't you? And he, you know, perked up, you know, moved the head around a little. I said, I'll tell you what. I said, you wait right there, and I'll be right back with something for you. And I went to the fridge, and I got some of those uh, cheese squares, you know. They're little cracker-sized pieces of cheese. And I went out, and I opened the door, and the cat just sat there. You know, it wasn't scared of me or nothing. I mean, my shadow scared it. But now it's just sitting there, you know, and I threw him a square and he started eating. And I says, hey, I said, I'll tell you what, it's the feast. I'll give you another. How's that? You know, and he just sat there and waited and I tossed the other one to him. And he like just looked at me real funny and I closed the door and, you know, the screen door. And I got to thinking, I says, you know, <laughs> that could have been a holy malik. They can take any shape, you know, same thing with Satan's critters, Satan herself. She could come as an angel or a holy malik of light and her ministers, you know, as if they was ministers of righteousness, the whole world's covered with them. And that's why it says Deuteronomy 28, 20, that Yahshua is going to bring on all of them that break the commandments, cursing and confusion and rebuke in all that you set your hand to do until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me. Again, you know, we've got the Black Lives Matter and we've got these gangs, you know, that are black human beings, but one gang is against this other gang, and that gang's against those two gangs, and that gang's against, and they get shooting each other up and everything else without even a reason or knowing why, calling it territorial or whatever, when our Heavenly Father owns everything. And at the gathering, you're going to see that none of these things are going to make it in through the gates. On the outside will be those being indoctrinated to where they can understand that when they come into the general population, they're going to live by every word that's of these scriptures. Each and every law they will obey or else they will be subjected to the letter of the law. If they don't want to live by the spirit of the law, the letter of the law will come to take place if there are those that are going to commit adultery, and I'm sure there probably will be, and it will be for the example being set. There will be stonings. But these things are already taking place. Yahshua is going to send on you cursing and confusion. LGBT, LMNOP, 
groups and everything else. They're little rainbow flags and little boys not even knowing if they have a penis or not. You know, I mean, poor little fellas. But these things were prophesied. They had to come to pass. And rebuke and all that you set your hand to do. I mean, the rebuke can be in where you're just living day by day, payday to payday, having nothing to show for yourself, you know, not knowing our Heavenly Father, but still out there suffering in ways it's almost like you are one of the 144,000, but we live some pretty crappy lives. I've had everything taken from me time and time again. Everything I love turned to dust or turned around to bite me. I've lived most of the curses that are in Deuteronomy 28, and I was keeping the laws. So I could almost imagine what it's going to be like on those poor people out there. I mean, I've still got a spot or two that itch and burn so bad, you know, from when I had phosphate poisoning back around 2015. Could have been 2013, 2015. Uh, I got it from pyrophosphates in tuna, and I was taken into hellfire for over 28 hours straight. I know what hell is like. It's not like people say, but it seemed like everything I set my hand to do, every business I got into started really wonderful. Then all of a sudden, right after I would invest everything into it, it would just fall apart. I couldn't give the stuff away. I had to pay to get it taken away, I guess you can say. It was like I had that uh, gift of that one god that turns Midas, I think his name was, that they say that whatever he touched turned to gold. Well, everything I touched turned to caca, you know? Well, there we go again. Okay, so what I actually did here was I brought forth a pretty interesting lesson or teaching, whatever you like to call it. If you don't like to call it that, then call it whatever you want. My visitation with you during the feast. And what I did was I was led for about two hours and 30 minutes. My voice got sore, but I figured this way, instead of me having to figure out what to bring forth each day, pursuant to a video, what I did is made a long one that I'll just chop up and then each day during the feast, I'll have to make a header or the beginning of the video using the next segment of the two hours and 30 minutes that our king led me into bringing forth some very interesting things. So I hope that you'll watch each one. I'll try to keep them short enough to divide between the seven days that are left of the feast for me here. Though well, y'all, that this was already the second day for, will no longer be of the feast on the eighth day, but you can still watch the last great day's video as well for a pretty important message from what I see. So with that, I do love you. This here first day of the feast of tabernacles, a marvelous Sabbath. I need to get out part one so that I can work on my pizzas and hopefully tomorrow for the introduction, I'll show you what they look like or at least one of them does or part of one. Depends on how hungry I am. Right now I'm pretty hungry. I'm gonna jump onto some milk and rum, do the editing of the video because I don't have to speak anymore today. And I'm going to enjoy this feast with some rum and milk and eventually pizza that's going to be out of this world and prepared for our King and our Heavenly Father who'll see me eating it at his feast. So with that, I do love y'all. And hey, if you haven't, heard about keeping the Feast of Tabernacles, please consider doing so right away. Take a look at the prior videos that were brought concerning how to calculate the feasts and such. And if you don't agree that a day starts at sunset to sunset or sundown to sundown and not sun up to sun up, but it's sundown to sundown, just like it showed in Leviticus chapter 23 for the Day of Atonement, from evening until evening. Same thing for Passover is evening until evening. And the Feast of Tabernacles started on the 14th day at evening, which began the 15th day. And for an approximate 24-hour period, 
is the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles, which will be finished up here, I'm certain, by the time I get this posted. But I want to say a joyous first day of the feast and a second day of the feast for those of you who kept it a day earlier than we did, depending on when the new moon was shown where you live. So please, if you don't know when a day starts or whatever, refer to this video here. It was put out March 17, 2021. When does a day start and or etc. in Scripture Part 1. And what other things have you got to do during a feast than to lap up the waters of life that our King provides us on His channel? So let's show ourselves approved. Study to show ourselves approved. Prove all things. And it's time for some milk and rum. I love you all. I hate what you do, you who sin. And you who don't sin, boy, I really love you. Bye.